Hi guys. It is a fine autumn day here in August. Uh, here on Friday, August 7, 2020, where we are enjoying a 70 degree day here on Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York. It is a fine day, so I'm taking a break from planet nibbling to do what I do every Friday, and that is check in with our buddies over uh, Rhett Butler and the folks at mongabay.com for our weekly laundry list of ways this planet is being abused and assaulted while I have been uh, abusing and assaulting my own little piece of the planet, I guess here bugs on it in a jar so uh i think that i am the only one in the doomosphere covering manga bay i've got to say guys uh kevin over at black bear news and sandy over at uh environmental coffee house have really gone into overdrive with the doom coverage so uh it's like all I have left is sloppy seconds. So maybe Kevin and Sandy are letting me still cover Manga Bay. And oh yeah, by the way, I am uh, Sam Mitchell and this is uh, Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza. So let's dive right into this week's uh, cesspool of Doom and gloom. I, I love it when they ask a question in a headline. <clears throat> the title headline, Why are some endangered species ignored? Because nobody gives a damn. Okay, now that we have answered the question, Why are so many endangered species ignored? Let's... Uh, take a look at reasons why there are so many uh, endangered species, but first we need to give a hopium nod to, let's give a, an apocalyptimist hopium nod to Manga Bay with this hilarious headline and photo. In centropic, centropic agriculture, Farmers stop fighting nature and learn to embrace it. Yes, this is Brazilian-based Swiss agronomist and cocoa farmer Ernst Gosch has created a model of organic farming that he says can replace the green revolution. His syntropic farming system imitates nature. Uh-huh. It is climate friendly, ecologically sustainable, and above all, above all, cost efficient, attracting a growing number of soy farmers in Brazil interested in implementing it. So I wish you could see this little photo to illustrate the uh, ecologically sustainable a uh, new kind of organic farming. So now that I have had my sick laugh, okay, the video of the week for anybody unaware of what the controversy around palm oil is, the video of the week, Manga Bay explains what is the controversy around palm oil. I don't know why there's any controversy. Uh, palm oil is one of the single biggest drivers of the destruction of planet Earth on the planet. This is, is, this, is this a controversial statement? Okay. What is going on with fishermen in, Indi in, in uh, Indonesia? Indonesian fishers who fought off tin miners prepare to battle all over again. Yes. 
Fishermen in the Indonesian region, that is a key source of the tin used in iPhones and other electronics, have protested a new zoning plan that will now allow mining on an important fishing coast. Yes. Uh, the mining has proven deadly for workers and damaging to coral reefs, mangrove forest, and local fisheries. Yes, imagine that. Uh, and guys, I'm just skipping through some of these. Uh, go back to Paraguay. They have really uh, playing up the marijuana farming in Paraguay story. Uh, it's been going for several weeks. A couple of articles this week. Uh, <clears throat> park rangers tasked with the country's reserves and parks say they routinely encounter hostile criminal groups. Do you think so? These encounters can take a violent turn. Several rangers have been murdered while patrolling protected areas for illegal activity. Uh, there is just one park ranger for every 38,000 hectares. That's about 80,000 acres. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... Here is uh, the latest article on whale watching and swimming with whales, all, all of this crap. Uh, this is particularly looking at Sri Lanka. And uh, did you read that article? Where was it? I don't know if it was Sri Lanka where that woman was, I guess she lived. She was swimming with the humpback whales and I guess had a little collision with one, almost killed her. Yes. Concerns about irresponsible public contact around whales. Okay. What is the hydroelectric uh, dam news of the week? More than 500 dams are planned inside of protected areas. More than 500 dams are now either under construction or planned within protected areas over the next two decades. Uh, the study found that more than 1,200 large dams already exist within protected areas with 500 more on the way. Do you think so? Uh, the researchers express concerns about ongoing rollbacks to environmental protections, especially amid the corona panic. And this is just one more. What, what this is, you know, talking about what you're going to see more and more and you're already seeing in, in, in these plans is there is more and more of these planet eaters are going to use the excuse of having to restart the economy of all of these countries where the economies have been shut down in response to the corona panic so now obviously we need to restart the economy and the best way to do that is to gut the environmental protections which these planet eaters are claiming are a threat to the economy when in fact it was the government that shut down the it was the government of these countries themselves who shut down the economy and now the planet eaters, you see, you see where this is going for anybody who does not understand the corona panic. But I have gotten myself in enough trouble. So we are going to, uh, well, 
I, you know, the 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 manga bay uh, roundup is the single most honest. Uh, Rhett Butler and Manga Bay are the single most environmental uh, group on the planet spelling out how the corona panic is doing, is wiping out our fellow earthlings and just giving a green light to the planet eaters. I just heard, got an email from a friend, you know, talking about how the Corona panic is good for wildlife. Uh, okay, we just uh, the one we just talked that they were touching on in this last story about the dams. That's all over the planet. Let's zero in on and see how this is playing out in Brazil. <clears throat> Brazil dismantles environmental laws via huge surge in executive acts. Between March and May of this year alone, the government of Jair Bozo Nero published 195 ordinances, instructions, decrees, and other measures which critics say are an indirect means, sounds pretty direct to me, of dismantling Brazil's environmental laws and bypassing Congress during the same period last year, just 16 of these were from 16 to 195. In April, Environment Minister Ricardo Salles suggested that the Bozo Nero administration, quote, run the cattle, run the cattle, which experts say within the context he used the phrase is a euphemism for utilizing the corona panic crisis as a means of distracting Brazilians from the administration's active undermining of the environmental rule of law. Uh, a partial study of the 195 acts found that they allow rural landowners to illegally def deforest and occupy conserved areas in the Atlantic forest, uh, blah, blah, blah. This just go, goes on and on as, uh, you know, where, where even it even allows increasing the export of tropical fish. I mean, like, no stone is being left unturned. Uh, that Jair Bozo Nero, being the biggest planet eater on the planet, who unfortunately did not die uh, of Corona panic, uh, th this is he is taking full advantage to declare war on the uh, Amazon rainforest. Let's go from the Brazilian Amazon to Vietnamese mangrove forest, where we see Vietnam approves a nine billion dollar development within a mangrove reserve. Yes, uh, this is the $9.3 billion Kangao tourist city was recently approved for construction within the buffer zone of a UNESCO mangrove biosphere reserve. Yes. Uh, the project will require the reclamation of a huge amount of land along the coast. Uh, there you go. Environmentalists have petitioned the government to reconsider the project, but it is a key part of the country's drive toward industrialization. 
Yes, it is. Okay. What is the latest news about the myth of sustainable palm oil? How about meaningless certification? Meaningless certification. Study makes the case against sustainable palm oil. You know, this has always been one of my few problems with Rhett Butler is how he continues to parrot this, this concept of sustainable palm oil. Rhett Butler knows more than anybody on this planet that palm oil is not sustainable, but at least we're getting a reality check here. Okay. Three quarters of oil palm concessions in Indonesia and Malaysia and Borneo certified by the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil occupy land that was forest and or wildlife habitat as recently as 30 years ago. Yes. Um, the fact that someone else did the deforestation just a few years before does not absolve the palm oil plantation's owner and definitely does not justify a sustainability label by a certification scheme, says co-author Roberto Crazola Gatti. He adds the the RSPO's failure to account for past deforestation means that, quote, every logged area today could be certified as a sustainable plantation tomorrow in an infinite loop of meaningless certification. And, and this is, you know, one of the, the many ways that this uh, palm oil uh, certification is a joke. So they can come in, so before they buy the land, you know, some other planet eater, the loggers come in, log it, burn it, whatever, so then when the palm oil company buys it, it's already been destroyed by another planet eater, so they say, well, what we're doing here is sustainable. That we didn't, uh, we didn't cause this. You know, and you can use this argument. You know, Manhattan. Uh, look at Central Park. Uh, anyway, you can make this argument anywhere on the planet. That's what's so hilarious about that that BS story. Started off with about uh, this new organic soy farming in Brazil. It's the same thing to, uh, to act like it's a sustainable soy farm. This is the very same thing going on with that crap. And Rhett Butler knows this. I love Rhett Butler. Don't get me wrong. I just get uh, irritated sometimes. Okay. Um, let's see, what next? Uh, there is so much going on here. Okay, you will not believe this one. Amazon gold mining wipes out rainforest regeneration for years. New research looking at Amazon's gold mining in, in the country of Guyana has found that the destroyed Amazon forest at mining sites shows no sign of recovery three to four years after a mine pit and tailing ponds are abandoned, abandoned largely due to soil nutrient depletion. In addition, mercury contamination at the sites. Um, all of that, uh, you know, how they use mercury in, in doing this. Uh, as long as the price of gold continues topping $1,700 an ounce or $2,000 an ounce, 
which is its current price during the still escalating corona panic, it seems likely there is little that can curb the enthusiasm of poor and wealthy prospectors alike for digging up the Amazon rainforest. Do you think so? Okay. What is the latest news from the pangolins? Illegal trade of Philippine pangolins is surging. A new report published by Traffic found that the illegal pangolin trade in the Philippines increased ninefold in the last two years with authorities confiscating almost 7,000 pangolins recently. Uh, traffic also conducted surveys around Manila to discover pangolin meat being served at restaurants. It's estimated that Philippine pangolins, a critically endangered species of the pangolin, have declined up to 95% in the last 40 years. Do you think so? Now we're going to go over to Southeast Asia to learn a little bit about the large antlered muntjac. There's 12 species of muntjac, these little bitty deer. Uh, the large antlered muntjac is critically endangered now with members of its scant, rarely seen population um, right around the border of China, Vietnam, and Cambodia. One of the biggest dangers to moot jacks and how many of my, our other earthlings uh, is snaring a hunting method used widely across Indochina and everywhere else, no one knows how many tens or hundreds of thousands of snares now clutter Southeast Asia, but rangers inside one national park found 27,714 snares in 2015 alone, that is seven snares per square kilometer, or 17 snares per square mile inside a national park. Yes, uh, and of course, you, you can uh, you can take a wild guess that this is one more. Uh, thing that is going to get worse in the corona panic as people start uh, just, uh, you know, killing our fellow earthlings for food and the fact that there's less and less rangers stopping more and more hungry people who are not allowed to make money to buy food. Uh, actually, the mainstream media had a good article uh, about this uh, very, you know, in, in uh, East Africa, talking about uh, obviously you are seeing a, a big uptick in poaching uh, during the corona panic because people need to eat. This is the Bill Gatey uh, view of the collapse of a planet. Here's a um, article on vulture poisoning in Africa. We've, they've had this story before. Many vulture populations across Africa are in steep decline as poisoning by farmers aimed at other predators is a leading cause. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Say hello and goodbye to Madagascar's newest mouse lemur. A new species of mouse lemur, considered the tiniest primates in the world, has been described. Huh, 
but scientists fear the new species is already at risk of disappearing like almost all of the other 107 species of lemurs. Yes. Uh, Jonah's mouse lemurs are found in an area half the size of Yosemite National Park in a region where forests are fast disappearing. And this is the latest story. Every time scientists identify a new species, it is hello, goodbye. Uh, let's see. You will not believe this one. Forest crimes persist in Peru following indigenous leaders' murder. Yes, the leader of an indigenous community in Peru's Huanuca region was murdered when he went fishing earlier this year. Despite this, criminal groups have reportedly continued to operate in the area. Yes. Uh, all right. Here is a yet another uh, article about marijuana cultivation in Paraguay. No choice. Why communities in Paraguay are cutting down forests to survive? Illegal deforestation for marijuana cultivation is a growing problem for Paraguay's protected areas. Sources say much of the clearing is done by indigenous community members, which is the same as with this gold mining in the Amazon, as I was reporting 11 years ago in the book that I wrote about this subject down there, that it is the indigenous community members actually on the ground doing the planet uh, destroying, but of course they're not the ones making the money. Sources say much of the clearing is done by indigenous community members and other small farmers who are beset by poverty and have no other options. Uh, so they set up this program to try to work on it, but the program has been stymied by the corona panic. Do you think so? Uh, here is in, uh, armed militants taking out indigenous groups uh, in the Colombian Amazon. Is there no end to this? Uh, staff from the National Nature Parks of Colombia have been forced by former FARC rebels and other illegal armed groups to abandon 10 Amazonian parks that cover nearly 9 million hectares, otherwise known as 22 million acres, and are home to an estimated 43,000 undiscovered species. Uh, the absence of staff has negatively impounded, impacted surrounding communities as well as the monitoring of natural resources, threatened species, and climatic information. Yes, and then add on top of that the corona panic. Pretty much 22 million acres of the Colombian Amazon has been completely abandoned by anything remotely resembling a cop. Uh, you think that Minneapolis is the only place on the planet eliminating police forces. There are no cops left patrolling the Amazon rainforest. The planet eaters uh, the rebels, the coca growers, the marijuana farmers, whoever 
are having a complete heyday down in the Amazon rainforest as the fires uh, burning. I, I, I can't believe that Manga Bay does not have a uh, story on the fires in the Amazon which hit a new record for the month of July. Nowhere in this uh, Manga Bay report do they mention the, this wildfire uh, epidemic going on down there in the Amazon, uh, which is taking full advantage of the corona panic. Okay, as long as we're talking about the Amazon, Amazonia's people domesticated crops 10 thousand years ago. This is just the latest evidence coming in that early Amazon human inhabitants domesticated and grew crops more than 10,000 years ago, making the region one of the world's earliest centers of plant domestication for food. Um, the new research helps dispel a persistent myth that the Amazon long existed as a sort of wilderness paradise largely untouched by human influences. Instead, it is now thought that humans have been profoundly altering the landscape of Amazonia for thousands of years with lasting consequences for species conservation and uh, habitats, and I, I can't get off onto a whole rant here, uh, but it is an interesting theory and one that I ascribe to, I think I might have read this in 1491, that uh, these, these quote, primitive Amazon Indians, these, these few little scattered bands of Amazon Indians, uh, what we know of when we think of an Amazon Indian, what they are, are the tiny few survivors. They are the survivors of the genocide uh, from, you know, when the Spanish first got there, there's plenty of good evidence that there were all sort, there were cities, uh, these giant farms, the very first Spanish, uh, people, you know, penetrating the Amazon, describing all of this. And what, when we think of these savages, what they are is the collapsed society. Thousands of years, humans were destroying the Amazon. And uh, it's, it's when the population of the Amazon crashed probably by 95 percent and all of the cities and uh, farms and whatnot went down with them that mother nature came in and took back over the Amazon rainforest and there's this ridiculous myth that these Amazon Indians are some sort of living in harmony uh, with nature yeah when, when, you, uh, when you're forced to by the collapse of, uh, glo uh, of your society. Uh, the, the, and, and you see the same thing with uh, the remnants of the Mayan collapse, that when you make any place a human exclusion zone by getting rid of the humans, Mother Nature comes back in. But I realize I will be called a racist or whatever for pointing this out. A few more here. Here's a story on climate change uh, and, and taking out the forest in Mexico. When, okay, what's going on with freshwater fish in Sri Lanka? New assessment shows 74% of Sri Lanka's freshwater fish threatened with extinction. Yes. Uh, most of Sri Lanka's freshwater fish are found outside of these joke protected areas 
and therefore are, di are affected directly by all the major drivers of biodiversity loss, such as habitat loss and degradation, overexploitation, pollution, invasive species, and climate change. Uh, good God, guys, this goes on and on. What is going on with the chimpanzees in the Ebo forest in Cameroon? New logging plan is a, quote, death sentence. The Ebo forest is the largest remaining intact forest system left in southwestern Cameroon, spanning more than 200,000 hectares otherwise known as 500,000 acres, and providing a refuge to a multitude of rare species, including chimpanzees, drills, and a tiny population of western gorillas. So what do you think the Cameroon government has to say about this? So with this uh, knowledge, the Cameroon government recently approved a logging concession for the Ebo forest, which would allow trees in 169,000 acres of the region to be harvested despite opposition from conservationists and local communities. Uh, the forest was previously slated to be transformed into a national park, but those plans were dashed in 2013. Yes, uh, conservationists worry that logging and any other uh, concomitant activities such as forest destruction and poaching will place considerable pressure on endangered and critically endangered species. Do you think so? Okay, I'm not surprised to see this uh, story showing up. Does coconut oil really threaten more species than palm oil? No, it does not. Uh, you know, I reported on this story just recently, this new study who I am convinced was written by uh, the palm oil industry, obviously are the ones that funded this study claiming that uh, coconut oil is more uh, damaging to the planet than palm oil. Uh, here is a reality check. Uh, the authors have since stated that, quote, we want to be very careful not to say that coconut is actually a greater problem than palm oil. Yes. Uh, okay, two more. Back to the Amazon, gold miners overrun Amazon indigenous lands as corona panic surges. Yes, uh, new reports say that a major invasion of indigenous reserves and conservation units is underway, prompted by miners well-backed with expensive equipment supplied by wealthy elites. Miners are emboldened by the inflammatory anti-indigenous and anti-environmental rhetoric of Jair Bozo Nero, which has sent a clear signal that it has no major plans of stopping the invasions or penalizing the perpetrators. Through June of this year, deforestation by mining within conservation areas represented 68% of total tree loss in legal Amazonia. Yes. Uh, anyway, then we're going to wind up in Brazil with the shocking headline, and 
anticipated new restrictions on wildlife trade in Vietnam fall short of a ban. Earlier this year, in response to the corona panic, Vietnamese Prime Minister, I love this guy's name, Guyen Wan Phuc, called for the drafting of a ban on wildlife trade and consumption huh, by April 1st, but after a delay of several months, on July 23rd, the government finally released a directive aimed at strengthening enforcement of existing rules governing the wildlife trade, but not banning the trade as conservationists had hoped. Do you think so? When is a ban not a ban? When it involves planet eating. But anyway, I have got to wrap up this week's edition of uh, my Manga Bay Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant because I understand I am talking to myself and as Groot points out every week, uh, nobody cares, Sam, about the single most important environmental news on the planet, not even down here in the Doomosphere. Nobody wants to hear it. If you are one of the few people on the planet who has made it this far, please spend a second to thumb up this video, and if you want to join, uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles. We would love to have you, but that out of the way, I am now going to go load up my truck with some mined sand so I can fill up this trench with sand to bring a underground power line to my little cabin for the end times. Bye, guys. Are you ready to go load up some sand? Zap.